In our series for Absolute Beginners Lesson 8, we had taught the basics of how to improve with sketches. We wanted to make a quick tutorial on sketching fundamentals because a need for it has just come up. You see, as a teacher of Fusion 360, I have students from all over the world of all sorts of age groups. And one of the nicest things about being a teacher is that through teaching new students, I'm taken back in time to when I first started learning. It helps me to see through their eyes what might be a challenge for anybody that's learning Fusion 360, and hence the idea of this video. So let's learn a fundamental skill in less than five minutes. Here is the original drawing. In that lesson, which I'll post at the top right of your screen if you'd enjoy watching it, I had mentioned that we need to take this drawing and break it down into primitive shapes, which means we need to see basic shapes like circles, squares, rectangles, and so on. But what happens with new students is something that you can see here, which is actually the homework of one of my students. Can you spot when it went wrong? You can see in the timeline that we actually have three total sketches. And what we'll do here is we'll go into them as individuals. So here, the primitive shapes are there. We have two circles. We have our primitive shape as a square. And then we have our center point for our counterbore. And then after that, we have the extrudes. Everything looks great here. But what went wrong? We have three total sketches. Now, how many should there be? Well, let's take a look at my original file. And there you have it. We only have one. Let's dive into it. Here we have every single sketch element in one total sketch. And what this means is that later on, when we start extruding those sketch elements, well, we can control our model a lot more. And that's something that has been lost with this student's homework right here. So let's quickly replicate the proper way to create this part. And I'm just going to go to a new file here. We'll create a sketch on our XZ plane. We'll create our small diameter first, 1.375. Remember, we can just right click and we have frequently used sketch elements down there. So this is a center diameter circle C for the shortcut. And this is two and a half. And now we'll create our square. So this is two inches by two inches. And we'll create the center point. And I'm actually going to use a point now rather than a small circle. So we can just create that center point right there. I'll just put it off in space just for fun. And we can create a dimension between those, which is 1.25 and another dimension D is the shortcut between there and there, 1.25, and there is the center point of our hole. From this, we can simply extrude those features. And remember, we can pick two items to extrude. In this case, we want to pick those two, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was one inch. Our sketch disappears. As soon as we create an extrude, our sketch disappears. We just have to go back to our browser, sketch, and make our sketch one visible. It brings back all of our sketch elements. From there, we can extrude this part of our sketch, and that is 0.5 deep. Now, since we have made that sketch visible, our sketch remains on the screen until we get rid of it. Now we can create our counterbore. At this point, I would hide the sketch, and we can create our fillets. So there are our four fillets. And I believe that was 1 8th. And remember, we want to create this fillet as well. We can create it in the same operation. We'll just add a selection set, create it there. And I think this was 0.75 if I'm not mistaken. So you can see in the timeline, we only have the absolute basic elements or the minimum amount of operations to make our part. Now you might be asking, well, why don't you also sketch the fillets and then extrude them? So if we go into that original sketch, why don't we put fillets in here as well? Well, that's a great question. Now here's the answer. In this case, it is much easier to add the fillets after as its own operation. In other cases, it might be easier to add the fillets to a sketch. Now the CAD designer needs to make those decisions throughout the design process. That comes with building your skills and hopefully through a teacher that you like learning from. That being said, we hope that you enjoy learning from the Learn It channel. If so, we would truly appreciate if you were to like this video and consider subscribing. Check out our other tutorials so that until next time, you can keep on learning with the Learn It channel.